Good morning, everyone. It's great to see such an excellent turnout uh, for today's webinar. Today's webinar is all about how you can take your Microsoft Teams meetings to the next level, how you can go from Stone Age to Rockstar status when collaborating in Microsoft Teams. Now, don't forget, if you have any questions, please post them in the Q&A in the top right -hand, uh, corner of your screen, and we'll make sure we'll address as many as we can today, but most definitely follow all of them up post today's event. So let's get started. The workplace of the future will be a blend of remote and physical offices. And in this hybrid workplace, it is critical that everyone feels engaged and connected no matter uh, where they're working. When COVID hit, we were relieved that we could work from home, discovering the value of teams and video calls along the way. But as COVID has dragged on, many have come to the conclusion that although video meetings are useful, they're a bit one-dimensional and we feel a little bit disconnected working from home. Prior to COVID, most of our meetings would be in person. Now they're all remote. What used to be a quick hallway chat has now become a 30-minute online meeting. And whether we like it or not, we find ourselves in back-to-back -back online meetings. But how productive are all of these meetings? The big question is, are you and your team making the most of the time spent in these online meetings? Or are you feeling overwhelmed, suffering from meeting fatigue, and feeling burnt out uh, with all of these meetings? Are you turning up to meetings unprepared? And is the value of these meetings diminishing because follow-up actions are being lost amongst the noise and cracks of all of these back-to-back uh, -back meetings? So today, we're going to take a look at some of the new and exciting Microsoft Teams features and devices launched at Microsoft's recent Ignite conference that will help your people feel more connected, making meetings more inclu inclusive and bringing together both remote and in-room attendees to make meetings more inclusive and collaborative. Let's start by focusing on new features such as meeting management, together mode and breakout rooms that will help your people turbocharge the value they get out of their meetings. Let's jump straight into the demo and take a look at Microsoft Teams new meeting lifecycle management features. Let's begin in my Teams calendar, which is exactly the same calendar as you see in Outlook. I'm looking at my diary and I'm reminded I have a financial review meeting tomorrow that I'm leading and I've realized that I've forgotten to send out the pre-reading material to the group. Previously, I'd have gone into Outlook and hit reply to all on the meeting invite, sending everyone an attachment, essentially creating another thread of information and one more email my colleagues need to manage. Now with Microsoft Teams' new concept of managing uh, the meeting lifecycle, I can keep everything together by simply engaging with my meeting details. By right-clicking on my calendar invite, I spin up a Teams chat for that meeting. So let's message the group asking uh, for any feedback and attaching the pre-reading material which I've got on my OneDrive. There, bang, it's sent. All contained in Teams and no random emails. You'll notice that there's an icon next to that chat that signifies it's a meeting chat. This is to help you easily identify your meeting chats from those one-to-one -one and group-wide chats you might be having already. You can filter your Teams chat to see just those that are related to meetings. I do that by selecting the filter in the Teams chat, clicking on the ellipsis, and then choosing Meetings. By opening the meeting in my Teams calendar, I can see all the activity, the full life cycle of the meeting together in one place, including the various chat posts, files I've shared, and any meeting follow-up, such as a fully transcribed recording of the meeting. I believe if you take on board this new Teams feature, it will help you get and stay organized and be more productive with your meetings. But don't forget, this doesn't replace good professional working practices you should be following anyway. For example, preparing an agenda for every one of your meetings, clearly stating what success looks like for the meeting and dropping that into the meeting. If you do this and use Microsoft's new meeting lifecycle management feature we've just walked through, 
You'll allow you to feel, you'll allow you and your meeting participants to come better prepared, allowing you to shorten your meetings, giving some headspace to recharge your batteries before the next back to back meeting starts. Now what I'd like to do now is look at how you can personalize your own video experience in Microsoft Teams. And we'll do that by getting straight into a Teams meeting where we have our familiar gallery view. Showing up to nine videos at the same time, giving priority to those who are actively speaking. There are a few tips to keep in mind when it comes to personalizing your, your own view in a Teams meeting. From an individual's perspective, you can customize your own view uh, or video by right-clicking on an individual in the gallery's view and choosing pin. Locking our views to just one or a number of video feeds that we want to focus on. But what about those times when we want the whole audience to focus their attention on a specific individual? Perhaps it's a, a new speaker. In that case, a presenter can right click on an individual's feed in the gallery view and select Spotlight. This makes everyone's video feed to be focused on that one individual. Finally, if you've got more than nine people attending the meeting, you can turn on the large gallery view by clicking on the ellipsis and view up to 49 people. Now let's move on to one of my favorite features in Teams. It's called the Together Mode. This new meeting experience digitally uh, places participants into a shared space, making it feel like they're sitting in the same room, making the meeting feel more engaging by helping you focus on other people's faces and their body language and making it easy to pick up on those non-verbal cues that are so important in any form of human interaction. This is much easier on the eye because most of the real estate in a more traditional video conference is taken out with the background and not the person. With together mode, you can focus on the person and therefore reduce meeting fatigue. Now let's go back to the gallery view to discuss how you can use raised hands to ensure we engage effectively with our audience. Attendees can raise their hand directly in the top control bar by clicking on the hand. But what I particularly like with the raised hand feature is you can see the list of raised hands in the order in which they were raised. This is such a simple but effective way of engaging well with your audience, making sure you are not annoying an attendee by ensuring you answer their question in a timely manner. Now let's talk about speaker attribution, which I think is a bit of a silver bullet for remote attendees of meetings. Speaker attribution allows you to follow along with what is being said and by whom. You can also record this fully transcribed meeting after the event so you can refresh your understanding of what was said in the meeting to ensure you haven't missed something. Using live transcripts will ensure no detail will be lost from your meetings because it will be available for all those attending to reference at any point in time. Don't forget the meeting recording and the live transcript will be available in the meeting chat as soon as the meeting concludes and the meeting recording will be stored in OneDrive, enabling you to share your meeting recording seamlessly and easily with those outside your organization. So let's do a quick roundup of what we've learned so far with Together Mode and Live Transcripts. Now I'm a big convert to Together Mode. When it first came out, I thought it was a bit of a gimmick, but I use it for all my meetings now. I really do find meetings less tiring compared to when I used to use the more familiar tiled video gallery. And in terms of live transcripts, it's a must for all meetings. I now no longer feel frustrated trying to follow along with colleagues who, who might be in that kind of physical meeting room uh, chatting away, yeah, uh, and I'm no longer uh, where I typically was uh, not able to follow along with what's being said because they're off speaker and by whom. And being able to easily search for content in the meeting recording by speaker or by subject post the event is such a winner. Now let's move on to uh, breakout rooms. Let's take a scenario. We have a group of people, a group of colleagues that are being tasked to take part 
in a brainstorming session. Now that we've briefed them, let's say we've briefed them, let's say we've briefed everyone on the brainstorming session, and we're going to jump in and uh, go ahead and create the breakout room, set this brainstorming session up. You'll notice a new icon on the top of our meeting control bar for meeting rooms. Let's click on it and configure the breakout rooms. We start out by defining the number of breakout rooms needed and how we want to separate our group. Teams can automatically assign attendees into rooms or we can choose to manually assign them ourselves. Let's create two rooms and have the participants automatically assigned. Here we can see uh, that what will be created is two rooms, each with five people in them. You can create up to 50 breakout rooms, so you know there's absolutely no limit. So now we have our two breakout rooms with the default names. We can choose to keep the names or rename it by simply clicking on the ellipse next to the room and choose rename. Now let's take a look at how teams are distributed our attendees amongst the rooms. As we expand the room, we can see the assigned participants. You can make changes and swap attendees between the rooms. For example, let's swap Nicole from the blue room to the green room and move Amy from the green room to the blue room. Now, when you're ready to move everyone into their assigned rooms, simply click on the Start Rooms button. As the organizer of the main meeting, I can choose to jump in between the rooms to do any facilitation that's required. So let's go and see what's going on in the blue room. It looks like everyone's engaged, turned on the video. I could switch my view to together mode for a more engaging experience and use live transcription to record who said what for later reference. Now let's go check in on the other room uh, who are getting on with the SWOT analysis using Microsoft Whiteboard. Now when the time is up, you can bring everyone back into the main meeting uh, and all the files, the chats, whiteboard and transcriptions can be referenced after the rooms are closed. So you're not losing anything. You can pool all those together because uh, you'll be pulling all that together as part of the summary and wrap up uh, for, the, uh, for the brainstorming work session. Work session. Let's round up this section of the webinar and leave you with the key pointers to help you make the best of Teams meetings where you can meet smarter, stay focused and achieve more. Number one, remember context is key. So when hosting your next Teams meeting, give the meeting chat feature a try and keep all the communications and files in that central location. Number two, utilize meeting recorders with full transcription to make sure you capture all aspects of your meeting, including any kind of insights and to-do list uh, items. And finally, turn on together mode for your next meeting. Whether catching up with colleagues or running a brainstorming session with your team, sit together in a virtual space and connect together. It is such an invaluable feature. I'm, I think it's a real winner. It's a more natural and less draining way of meeting your colleagues uh, virtually. Let's change gears and start talking about meeting rooms, from your huddle spaces through to your large traditional uh, board, boardroom setups. In this section of the webinar, I want to talk about the innovative meeting room solutions Bedrock provides using the very latest from Microsoft to make your users, wherever they are, massively productive. Joining a meeting as a remote user can make you feel like you're on the outside looking in, making you feel like you're less involved compared to those sitting together in that physical meeting room. It is essential that virtual meetings are inclusive and interactive for all participants, regardless of where they join from, a place where everybody can lean in and actively participate where everyone, be they remote or in the office, can see and hear each other and have open discussions as if they were all sitting together in one room. And joining a meeting needs to be friction-free, making it easy to start or join your meeting so you're not spending the first 10 minutes trying to get the damn meeting to work or the setup to work. You're working with cables and they just connect. Ah! So in this section of the webinar, 
we're going to take a look at how Microsoft Teams devices helps people feel connected, make meetings more inclusive, and bring together both remote and in-room attendees to make meetings more inclusive and collaborative. Now let's start by talking about Microsoft's latest innovation, or one of the latest innovations, the intelligent speaker. In the past, remote attendees may not have been able to fully follow what's happening in a remote room and find it difficult to understand who's speaking. Microsoft therefore introduced the intelligent speaker for Microsoft Teams rooms, which includes a special seven microphone array to identify voices of up to 10 people in a single physical meeting room. Apart from providing great audio to your conference room, it also provides speaker attributed transcription. So after a quick one-time enrollment, the intelligent speaker identifies who is speaking in the room and adds the name and profile picture to the meeting transcript, which you can see live streaming in the right-hand side of this video, making meetings more inclusive for all attendees, enabling attendees to spend less time note-taking and easily follow along with who said what in the room. And as I said before, a transcript file is automatically saved in the tab as part of the meeting. At any point during or after the meeting, you're able to search by keyword or names of individuals to go back and understand what happened in that meeting. So here in the video, you can see what you as a remote participant might see. You can see on the left hand what the team is collaborating on. The midsection are all the users taking part, and three of whom are in a meeting room using one of these intelligent speakers. And finally, on the right-hand side, we have the speaker attributed transcription scrolling through real time. Now, I now want to move on to intelligent capture. This next feature is one of my personal favorites. It's really, really impactful. Intelligent capture is another feature that helps remote attendees feel more included and engaged in a Teams meeting. When in-room participants want to use a traditional whiteboard to draw diagrams and jot down lists, typically remote attendees can't see what is on the board, so they start to feel disengaged. Intelligent Capture uses a dedicated content camera to intelligently detect crop and frame in-room whiteboards. Even if someone moves in front of the whiteboard, remote attendees will actually be able to see the content right through them. For me, this feature really is crucial for any hybrid business. Let's move on and talk about quick and COVID safe joining features. Microsoft Teams Room provides quick and touchless joining capabilities which are very important because of COVID and important if you want to avoid those frustrating moments where you seem to spend the first 10, 15 minutes of, of, of a meeting uh, trying to get things to work. I know of people that avoid using specific rooms in their office because of the trouble they always get when they try to use uh, the video conferencing facilities. What a waste of a resource, what a waste of a room. Now the first touchless experience is proximity join which allows users to join the meeting room from their PC or mobile device by selecting the room audio in their Teams meeting pre-join screen. Using, using a Bluetooth beacon, the nearby room will be discovered and audio options will be auto-populated, allowing you to select the audio device you wish to use. Another touchless experience is the new voice assistant, which is powered by Cortana which allows you, for example, to start or end a meeting using voice controls. Microsoft have also launched Teams Casting to share the screen of your personal device. Uh, this is such a great feature when you just want a quick ad hoc sync up with your colleagues where you're going to snatch some time in a room. It's not a structured meeting, but Teams Casting allows you to share the screen from your PC, your mobile phone or your tablet into a nearby Teams room. Now at Bedrock, we bring all of this technology together to deliver great collaborative experiences using Microsoft Teams from the smallest huddle space up to your traditional large boardroom setups. With our meeting room solutions, there's no cables to fiddle with and therefore you're not wasting your time, those precious 10-15 minutes at the front end of the meeting trying to get things frustratingly to work. 
our objective for your meeting rooms is to ensure you've got a simple one touch or zero touch solution that any user, any user can use with confidence to get working every time and first time. One of our latest innovations is using the Surface Hub to enhance the collaborative experience. So in your meeting rooms, you can maximize your screen real estate by using the front of room displays to show attendees in the meeting, while the Surface Hub is used to show content or to conduct a collaborative whiteboarding session, allowing you to experience collaborative meetings like never before. Wow, that was a real whistle-stop tour of some of the great features available to you in Teams to make your people work more effectively together and improve their productivity. Well, I just want to share a very quick piece of video to bring all of that together. Cortana, start my meeting. Joining your 2.30 p.m. Previously, people in the room generally had a better meeting experience than people joining from other places. Cortana, join my next meeting. Now, as some people are returning to the workplace, Microsoft Teams and Teams devices can help make the meeting experience feel more alike and more inclusive for everyone. The intelligent speaker for Microsoft Teams Rooms uses AI to recognize people's voices, so the transcript not only shows what was said, it shows who said it. That way, people who aren't in the room can easily follow along, and anyone can catch up on anything they missed. The raise hand feature lets people know you have something to say, which makes it easier to participate in the conversation. And Intelligent Capture helps people who aren't in the room see more of what's happening in it. So, while we may not all be in the same place, Microsoft can help us feel more like we are. Okay, let's start to bring uh, the webinar to a conclusion. At Bedrock, we provide these solutions as a managed service, where we maintain the meeting room solutions so you don't have to. As part of a managed service solution, we charge for these solutions on a per month basis. So helping you turn this investment in your business into a simple monthly OPEX cost. Hopefully, today you've seen how you can help your people feel more connected, making meetings more inclusive, and bring together both remote and in-room attendees to make meetings more inclusive and collaborative. So if you'd like to see how that could work for your business and understand the costs involved, please get in contact. We'd love to work with you. So that's it. Thanks for attending the webinar. Stay safe. And I look forward to seeing you uh, on one of our future webinars. Cheerio.